Um, so I will move House File 3488 uh, be referred to the Committee on Labor. And um, I understand we have an amendment. Um, would you like to do the amendment first? All right. Uh, Representative Stevenson, if you can uh, briefly explain the amendment, uh, we'll get that taken care of. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. The amendment incorporates some technical advice we received from the Department of Labor. It does introduce a new concept allowing uh, uh, young people to delete the content that bears their image once they reach the age of uh, 13. Uh, and I will note that that concept probably needs a little more refining, and we'll do that in the next committee stop. I'm committed to working with stakeholders to get that uh, language exactly right. All right. You, you know, I believe in the committee process. That's why we do this, so we yep. can make the bill better. Uh, any questions on the A1 amendment? Representative Niska. Thank you, thank you Madam Chair. And Re Representative Stevenson, I was, um, I'm interested in hearing um, a little bit more about the, the technical advice you got from the department. And in particular, um, I think it, it, this kind of goes, it, it seems like there's actually a substantive choice here to take um, enforcement of this provision out of the normal dolly process and only put it into the the potentially like a kid suing their parents or something like that as the only enforcement mechanism for this. So I was wondering if you could, I was hoping you could speak to that a little bit about um, whether that's, is that what's intended and is that, and, and, and maybe um, explain why that would be the right way to do this. Representative Stevenson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Niska. That's actually, you, you said exactly what I would have said, which is that the intention is to clarify that it's not, we're not creating a mechanism for which the Department of Labor is going to enforce this bill. This is intended to be a privately enforced uh, action. That's, this bill, as I will mention in my remarks, is based on language that has passed in the state of Illinois and as well as several other states, which is in turn based on a model uh, in California that's been in place for several decades, and that's how it's worked in all of those jurisdictions as being a private right of action, not a, a, a department enforced. And the original bill wasn't enforced by the department. It just was in a section of statute that kind of suggested maybe it could be. And so we're moving it into a different section of statute to add clarity that it's not being enforced by the Department of Labor. All right. Any follow-up, Representative Niska? Um, just just a, a couple of comments, which is, I, I guess I'm open-minded about that. It does make me a little worried that we're talking about just only the only way that this is taken care of is if uh, a kid sues their parents, probably, in a lot of situations. Um, and then uh, just a comment on the, the other provision, uh, maybe as it's moving along, uh, it could be in a different, moved in a different place with a different heading or something, just the way it's pl placed right now is a little confusing. It's in the middle of a provision about trusts for minors or something like that. So just a thought. All right. Uh, any other discussion to the A1? All right. Um, I can't remember if I actually moved the A1, so I will move the A1 amendment. Um, all those in favor of the A1, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. The motion prevails. The amendment is adopted. Uh, Representative Stevenson, to your bill as amended. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. This bill relates to children who are working as social media influencers. Many of you are probably not entirely familiar with this concept, so let me read you the story of a young person named uh, Samia, as told by the New York Times. Samia was an influencer before she could talk. Her parents, Adam and Latoya, are themselves uh, are influencers themselves and began chronicling Samia's impending arrival on YouTube and Instagram in 2014 uh, once they learned that they were pregnant. Samia's birth video is on YouTube, so she's pretty much been born into social media, said her mother. Samia is now four and has 134,000 followers on Instagram and 203,000 subscribers on YouTube. Her feeds are mostly populated with posts of her posing and playing, but they also feature paid promotions for brands like Crayola and Homestyle Harvest Chicken Nuggets. Members, this can be big money. The New York, I'm sorry, the Washington Post estimated that mom fluencing is a billion dollar industry nationwide. Kyle Fisher, the father of two year old identical twins who have more than two million followers on Instagram, said a sponsored post, just one post on his girl's account fetches between $10,000 and $20,000. This industry also has a very dark side. A Utah influencer named Ruby Frankie was charged with multiple counts of aggravated child abuse as her 12-year-old son showed up at a neighbor's home malnourished and with open wounds. Frankie's YouTube channel documented the lives of her six kids had over two million subscribers. Uh, Frankie's channel uh, advocated for severe punishment 
going without food, intense manual labor, and other extreme and odd punishments. One child reported being forced to sleep on a beanbag for months as a punishment. Frankie has pled guilty and is going to prison. Her YouTube channel was generating an estimated $1,000 every week. NBC reported on the story of one child influencer. Cam said that their mother began posing photos and videos of them on MySpace when they were in the second grade. They didn't comprehend how many people were watching them growing up, Cam said, until their mother joined Facebook. Cam assumed that their mother knew her thousands of friends personally, so they often accepted requests from random adults because their mother was a mutual friend. As a result, they'd sometimes received disturbing messages. Quote, I remember I was 12 years old and I was riding my bike with my friends around the town that we lived in at the time and getting a Facebook message the day after saying, hey, I saw you riding your bike, Cam said. And it was from an older man and it was just very uncomfortable. Cam, who is immunocompromised, said that throughout their childhood they were repeatedly hospitalized for a myriad health issues. Every time Cam had a new medical scare, they said their mother would immediately post about it on Facebook and people in Cam's real life would ask about it. It felt so invasive because I didn't tell anyone about my health situation and obviously it was all coming from what my mother was posting. Or consider the phenomena of mommy run accounts. These are social media accounts purportedly for young kids but actually run by their parents. Some of these accounts feature scantily clad pictures of teens and pre-tween girls. Some of these accounts offer access to even more content behind a paywall. Uh, this bill does two things. It gives kids the right to demand the permanent deletion of images and videos bearing their likeness once they age, reach the age of 13. I picked age 13 because that's when most platforms allow people to have accounts under federal privacy law. And so it seems like if you're allowed to post things online, you should be allowed to demand that images of you be taken down uh, from the internet. It also requires a certain percent of the money generated from this influence activity to be set aside uh, for the children's benefit in the trust that they can access once they reach adulthood. If that model sounds familiar, as I mentioned to Representative Niska, it's because it's actually been uh, in place for uh, TV and Hollywood child actors uh, for over seven decades in the state of California uh, due to some pretty notable cases of kids uh, who were working as child actors and then when they reached adult they had their nothing. The parents and managers had taken uh, all the money. Illinois has passed a similar law in the last year to this one for social media influencers and similar legislation is pending in six other states uh, this year. Um, and I do want to just be clear that this bill doesn't, I don't think, uh, fully address the problem of these uh, uh, kid influencing accounts, particularly those mommy run accounts that I was talking about. Um, you know, I think I had a great conversation with Reverend Scott on the floor yesterday about uh, this, this issue, and I've talked to uh, Chair Becker Finn and others about this issue, and I'll just say anyone who's got an idea for how we can better um, regulate and put guardrails on this, I would be very interested in talking to you. You know, I think that we do already have laws against, of course, child pornography, child abuse, child neglect, uh, but this is a new phenomena that we really need to take seriously. It's doing actual harm to real people, and we need to take it seriously. So thank you, Madam Chair. I'm happy to answer any questions. All right. Um, first, I didn't have any testifiers signed up, but I will ask if there is anyone from the public wishing to testify on this bill. All right, now we can move on to questions. Uh, members, uh, Representative Feist. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I was just wondering, so it, it seems really clear how this works if the child is like the toy opener and it's like they're the focus. Um, does this also protect when it's like a family and they, they have like, they have children in their videos, they might not be the focus. Um, could a child that just occasionally is in videos um, then like assert rights under this? I'm just curious like how far their protection goes. Representative Stevenson. I think what the bill contemplates is if the child's likeness is used in the post, then it counts towards the various protections in the bill in terms of the amount of, in order to trigger the bill, you have to be in a certain percentage of the content that's generating income and then the amount of income that's set aside depends on how much of the content the child is featured in. So, you know, just being in one post on the side probably is not enough to, to trigger the bill. Uh, it, you know, it'd have to be an ongoing thing. And then I, I think the percentage is 30% to be inside the bill. And then there's a, how much income you get just depends on how much you're in the posts. Uh, Representative Feist, any follow up? All right. Uh, Representative Finke. Thank you, Chair Becker-Finn. And um, my apologies for my tardiness. 
Um, thank you for bringing this bill, Representative Stevenson. Uh, it's an important bill. Um, my question is actually close to or adjacent to Representative Feist's question. A lot of these, um, I have children of the YouTube consuming age. They are not allowed to be on the internet in any way, shape, or form. Um, we have unique jobs here, and I would never allow for that. But I know that some of these have large families. A lot of these accounts are about the, 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 the large family phenomenon of people um, putting their making television shows or YouTube shows. And I'm just curious if we have 30% of the content creators compensated video content produced includes the likeness name or photograph of the minor. If, if we can sort of explain think about expanding that to make sure it's not, well, one of my seven kids is only in it for 9% and then the other one of my seven kids is in it for 14% and then you don't have, you avoid the law. Um, that would be a suggestion I would put forward. Yeah, Representative Stevenson. Respond. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Pinky. And you're right, a lot of these cases, uh, um, influencers do have larger families and so that's a, uh, an interesting idea about trying to make sure that you can't game the system by only putting one kid in, um, in post so often to make sure that they don't trigger the 30% uh, threshold. So I think that is something I'd be interested in thinking about and looking at. Thanks for raising it. Yeah, any follow-up? No, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Representative Scott. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And those people have asked some really good questions on this topic. It's, in fact, uh, we had some uh, friends over uh, over for to watch the Kansas City Chiefs win the Super Bowl. And um, anyway, they had their their kind of teenage and preteen kids with them, and I learned a whole new um, vocabulary and what goes on um, on this influencing piece, but and learned some new terminology. But thank you for the conversation yesterday, Representative Stevenson, and to research. I was going to try to offer an amendment that addressed you know sexual content and not being able these parents that are doing exploiting their own children is to me is there should be a special punishment for them and so um, but the devils in the details is as we've discovered it's not an easy thing to parse out to with definitions and the First Amendment and all these things so um, I look forward to you know exploring different avenues on this to tighten this up so that we can make sure that um, especially parents that are exploiting their own kids are held accountable and I think it's just unacceptable and I would guess that everybody around this table agrees. So thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, thank you for the comment. And I'll say, you know, kind of like many of the things we deal with in this committee, you know, sort of like balancing the freedom of expression versus the right to privacy. And, you know, we are rights as parents, but also, um, you know, ultimately these are not consenting um, adults to have their likenesses and their images out there um, for public consumption. I know I've had the phenomena of, being out at the science museum and seeing some kid I have never met in real life and recognizing immediately who that kid is because of their parent posting pictures of them. And I, th that happened um, and it made me realize and made me more careful about posting my own children's pictures. Even, you know, even on Facebook, you know, Facebook has been around so long, you might have like 800 friends. Um, that's a lot of people who have access to images of your kids, so it's, um, it's a good topic for us to delve into. Um, any other comments or questions from the committee? All right, closing comments, Representative Stevenson. Plenty of time to get to session. That's, that's great. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee for the uh, conversation today. I appreciate the feedback. We'll work on that uh, as we go to the next committee. Uh, the only thing that I'll add is um, we did last year uh, give the Attorney General uh, some funds to do a report on social media's impact on young people with particular emphasis on young people's mental health. That report came out on the 1st of February and it made policy recommendations to the legislature. If you haven't had a chance to review that, I strongly encourage you to take a look and if you're interested, uh, let me know and I will make sure you get a copy. Uh, I, I just, just asked our CA uh, to email that out uh, to the committee so we've all got it in our email. So. Uh, anything else, Representative Stevenson? Nothing further. All right. Um, I will renew my motion that House File 3488, as amended, be referred to the Committee on Labor. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails. All right. Thank you, Representative Stevenson.